Machine tools are highly complex assemblies containing many moving and rotating components. To avoid wear on the slideways, friction must be kept to a minimum. All machine tools are designed with highly complex lubrication systems. Good design and lubrication of bearings is a fundamental contribution to the efficient running of any machine. This model steam engine has one of the commonest types of bearing, a journal bearing. It separates the drive shaft and the conrod. It's made of phosphor bronze, which is a softer material than steel, and it reduces wear and tear on both the drive shaft and the conrod. In this gearbox, the drive shaft has to take an enormous load, which means there's a lot of friction. Once again, a journal bearing is used. The sleeve contains a phosphor bronze lining which is softer than the steel drive shaft. As these marks show, the lining tends to wear out first. In machine tools, good bearing design is of fundamental importance. This model shows the mechanism of a shaper. The up and down movement of the central bearing determines the length of strike. We overrode the safety lock on a shaper to show you the bearing in action. It's made of cast iron, moving on steel runners. Friction between these two materials is fairly low, and this factor, combined with good lubrication, keeps friction to a minimum. It's easier to move something on ball bearings than to slide it. By separating the components in a cage, friction between them is reduced. This exploded model of a car engine shows the ball bearings in the differential, and you could find many more examples. Roller bearings are more effective for heavy loads. This one is on a test rig in a laboratory. Load is applied at the top of the bearing by a hydraulic system. Because of the load, friction will be greatest at the top and bottom of the bearing. At the sides, there is very little friction, and the rollers tend to slip wherever friction is reduced. This is a rig for testing disc brakes. We're going to use it to show you one effect of friction. Apply the brakes at 1500 revs. The temperature of the disc is beginning to rise. That's because of friction. Repeated applications of the brake raise the temperature more and more. Eventually, the brake pads get so hot, they catch fire. In some cutting operations, you can see the same effect. This lathe was specially set up to show what can happen if you cut dry. The excessive heat has completely destroyed the tool tip. Cutting dry can have another effect, as you can see in this high-speed film. Friction causes material to build up on the face of the cutting tool, changing the rake angle and shortening the life of the tool. 
And here's something you may have done yourself. Turning against a dead center and using no grease. Friction between the rapidly spinning work and the dead center has generated so much heat that the tip has actually welded to the work. We repeated the entire cutting operation, putting grease between the center and the work. And this time we also used a coolant. Quite a dramatic change. Coolants and cutting fluids are used to conduct away the heat which friction tends to generate. They also protect the tool tip and the surface finish of the work. But sometimes the heating effect of friction can be used to advantage, in friction welding, for example. The join is completely invisible. This specimen bar shows a number of different metals which have been joined together by friction welding. Another effect of friction is wear. You can see the wear marks on the teeth of these gear wheels. And here's another scar on a machine tool slideway. This can spoil the rigidity of the machine. This rig shows how wear on moving surfaces is affected by load. The scar is simply due to the weight of the rig, but now if we increase the load, the scar is deepened. This situation looks pretty similar. but can you think why this hard stylus doesn't wear a groove in the soft material of the disc? On this milling machine, we've set up a meter to measure the power consumed during the cutting operation. As the cutter clears the work, the power consumption drops. Now it's no longer cutting, but it's still using up a lot of power. And here's the reason. Power is used up in overcoming the friction between all the gear wheels which drive the cutter. That's why we call friction the enemy of efficiency. Heat, wear and power loss are three effects of friction which engineers must always take into account for the efficient running of any machine.